Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Joseph and today I'm in the studio with Engracia. <laughs> Alright, so this is going to be a very quick video. Alright, so let me just quickly show you guys what I have going on. I'm just going to be behind the camera and point out everything that's going on. So starting off on the left, so this is just like a little slip, but here is my large reflector. That's what I've been using to bounce light in my videos for the longest time. And if I just pan a little bit this way, you'd see this is my camera. So this is the EOS R6 and I have the Canon 100mm macro lens, f2.8 on that. And then that is my Atomos. So we'll switch from this view to my camera view and that is why it's on a tripod so that I can control basically exactly where the camera is and the distance from the camera to Engracia. All right, so if I go up a little bit, over there is my small deep parabolic modifier. And right at the back over here is the Easy Glow strip box. But this time I've positioned it a little bit differently. And that is because I want to edge hair out from shoulder to shoulder basically. So you see in the images. But basically this video is just supposed to let you see how I capture like really sharp images uh, really sharp beauty images in general. So we're quickly going to move from here to my camera screen and then you guys will see the settings. So if you want to replicate it, um, this is the lighting setup and also the camera setup. So if you want to replicate it, it's going to be easy for you guys to do. So a little bit about the positioning. So Engrasha, just stretch your arm out. So she's just about an arm's length away from the modifier and I have the reflector just underneath so it's going to bounce the light from the main light up and then lift up any shadows and I also have this big one on the left to bounce any spill back onto her and then again the strip box is just going to be lighting this entire area so from shoulder to shoulder basically. As you can see we have Engracia um, framed really nicely. My camera screen, the settings are for my shutter speed is 1 over 160 f14 on the aperture and ISO 200. This is going to be like a really huge jump because I'm always doing like 5.6 or maybe maximum 7.1 but I will vary through the aperture so you guys can see exactly how it affects sharpness as well. Okay so for my first test shot, yeah that's perfect. Oh, that's nice. So this is even just with, um, I think I've not said the, the lighting correctly yet, but my main light is on half power and that is the Flashpoint AD400 Pro. And the one in the back is my um, AD200 and that is set to one over eight. So I'm just gonna quickly increase that. So let's say one over four and then let's take another shot. Perfect. You can see we are getting this nice um, lighting on over like her shoulder and stuff like that. And it really, really looks good. So one thing I want to do a little bit is shift this light over so that she's framed right, like right in the center of it. So the middle part is going to be um, where her head is, right? Okay, so I'm gonna take another shot. Perfect. Now you can see we have a lot of light on her shoulders. So, Ingrasha, let's just quickly take a few more shots of this and then I'll change my aperture and even the lighting setup as well. Yeah, perfect. Hold that. Yeah, that's really nice. Bring your chin down a little bit. No, you can do that. Yeah, perfect. Nice. One more. Okay, eyes to the camera. Perfect, hold that. Stunning. So you can see these images are really, really sharp. Just to test, all right, I'm going to drop my shutter speed from F14. So please keep this pose for three shots, okay? So, all right, this is our first one where we balance the lights exactly how we wanted for these camera settings. I'm gonna go down to 7.1. So my group B light, I'm gonna drop it to 1 over 16 and my group A light I'm gonna drop that from half power to 1 over 8 and take another test perfect now you can see we've been able to get the same exposure now we would look at these in post when I zoom in 
and then we'll see the differences. But I'm also gonna go down from 7.1 to my favorite 5.6, all right? And once I've dropped it down again, it means I need to go down on my power. So my group A light will come down to one over 16, and then my group B light would also drop to one over 32. Take a test. Perfect. Now you can see um, in pose when we zoom in, you see the differences. But again, people also wonder if you're able to shoot shallow depth portraits in the studio. So I'm quickly going to change my aperture to the lowest, which is 2.8 in this case. So take another test. Perfect. All right, so looking at these images from f14, 7.1, 5.6 to 2.8, you notice that the only thing I was changing the most was my lighting ratio. So I was just adjusting the light to suit the camera settings that I was shooting with. So these are the images that I shot at different apertures from f14, 7.1, 5.6, all the way to 2.8. But for you guys to see how effective the aperture is in terms of its relation to sharpness, I will show you between the 14 and the 2.8 apertures that I shot in because that is like a very wide aperture range and so you'll be able to see the effect a lot more but i'll still go through the 7.1 and 5.6 images just so you guys can see how um, it affects the shot even with the 100 millimeter because i'm quite far from here we don't have a lot of shallow depth in there if i had gotten extremely close so for example if i was shooting the portrait to be as tight as this we would have had a stronger uh, depth of field but because i was shooting fairly wide we don't really have the effect to be as strong so when i zoom in quickly between let me just let go the 5.6 and 7.1 shots and i just make it big also in order to see this i'm just going to zoom in to about this point or even maybe a little bit tighter somewhere like that all right so we can see her eyes we can see her nose and then we can see her ears you can see at f14 it is tack sharp this image is not edited it's straight out of camera and you can see all the textures on her face her lips her nose and her ears if i quickly just press the right arrow key so we go to the 2.8 you can see even the textures on her skin are not as defined the tip of her nose is very very soft and her lips have also lost some details and if we look at the ear even the cheek area so somewhere like from here all the way to her ears you can see it begins to fall off and go um, into like a very soft feel if i go back to the f14 you can see her lips have brought back all the details tip of her nose has brought back details the textures are even more pronounced and her ears from her cheeks to her ears are all in focus we can see every single detail at 2.8 We've lost those details in the ears and a little bit on her cheek. Tip of her nose is soft. Textures on her, on her face are a little bit soft. And then her lips also have uh, lost some details. So if you're shooting beauty campaign images for a brand, I feel that maybe between 7.1 and F14. So because I'm mentioning that, let me just quickly select 7.1 and 14. So this is 14. Zoom in and this is 7.1. You can see 7.1 is a little bit manageable, but um, you still have that shallow depth in there. So the ears are a little bit, a tad bit soft and the lips are also just a little bit soft, you know, but at F14, everything is tack sharp. This also means that if you're editing, you're going to spend more time editing this F14 image. And that is why for me, I have found F5.6 to be um, relatively like the sweet spot. So now that I'm here, let me just select all of them. And so again, I'm going to zoom in quickly. So this are F14 shot. This are 7.1 shot. This is our 5.6 shot, which is my sweet spot. You can see the textures are present, where we have some detail on the nose, we have some details in the lips, and her ears are still a little bit defined. You can see what they are. And 2.8 is really, really shallow, but I like to keep it at 5.6 
if I need extra detail, I just go to 7.1. But if I say I'm going to go to um, F14, that brings a ton of detail and that's going to increase the amount of work that I will be doing in post-production. So this pretty much sums up today's video. If you learned a thing or two, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know the apertures that you normally shoot at. And uh, yeah, if you found this video helpful, leave a like and also share so others can benefit from it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. And remember, don't ever give up.